Hello, everyone. You're watching CCP Podcast. And watch it. Enjoy it. Fun. Love life. Our room yours. Happening friends of CCB Podcasting Productions, welcome to Behind the Curtain Live. This is Legends of Wrestling. I am Chris Page. That right there is Eric the Lariat Steel. Brother, how are you doing on this fine, fine Saturday morning live on Twitch? Man, I'm doing good. I'm tired, but I'm doing good. It has been a very long week. And we got on a snowfall last night. Uh, but hey, I'm good. Every day above ground's a good one, brother. And I'm ready to watch one of my all-time favorite wrestlers and some of my all-time favorite matches. I mean, we we had a great show last week uh, with Stan Hansen. Obviously, we we both have a, an admiration for for his work. Uh, you more so than most, because obviously you, your moniker in the ring is the Lariat. <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, sir. For, for good reason. Um, and I wanted to to turn back around and follow back up because again, with when we do these shows, we only have so much time, right? Because uh, that's a that's a thing. And with Hanson, like, this guy had, he almost had two careers. He almost had his career in the States yeah. and he had his career over in, in Japan. And it was just really hard to get everything that we could get in the time that we had. So we're running it back today with the focus on Japan. Uh, we have seen a couple of these matches. Usually, guys, we try to do matches we haven't seen before, but to kind of encompass. Uh, the the Japanese aspect of Hanson. There are a couple on this run that we may have seen before. Maybe you've seen yourself. But I'm pretty sure there's some gems on here that you haven't seen. Uh, and there's only one thing to do, man, and that's to, that's to fucking get started. Um, let me, Let's go. Let me kill our logo and get our screen up. And you talk about Japan, you know, there's obviously one name that comes to mind, at least with me, that comes to mind off rip, and that's Giant Baba. So why don't we start with yes, Hanson and Baba? I'm ready. 1982. Let's make this I'm ready happen. For it. In three, two, one, play. Baba came is coming in with the champ. He's he's rocking a strap. And uh, let's slide into our next contest. This is 1983 Sumo Hall. It's all Japan. Hanson and Funk. Uh, let's make this one happen. Uh, you should be about the three minute and 12 second mark. All right, let me wait for it to load your three minutes and 12 seconds. Yep. And Hanson and Funk had a lot of really good matches. Uh, I'm not sure if I've seen this one or not. I'm not sure. I mean, I say I may have seen this Jump one. I'm not 100% sure myself, but they, they've done so much work over there with singles and tags, you know, Dory and Terry versus yeah. Brody and fucking Hanson and Hanson and Dory, Hanson and Terry. It's just all good stuff. Um, you ready to rock and roll? Okay, I have seen this one. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, three, two, one, play. If this is the match I'm thinking of, Terry Funk is going to do this sell through the ropes. And it's like one of the best sells I've ever seen. In my life. I think this is. Yeah, this is the. This is. Bef- this is before the forever retirement speech. And it's funny you said uh, the Funks against uh, Hanson and Brody because that was like the number one suggested <laughs> match on the side when I pulled this one up. I, I mean, what's not to be number one about it? They would tear it up. Yeah. Oh. Look at Funk's face. He face. is like all intensity. Funk go. was like kind of the same as like Hanson, where, you know, he almost has like, well, I would say Funk probably has like three different careers so he had his like he had his career in the states and then he had his career in japan and then he had like the ecw post ecw career you know mm-hmm. kept himself relevant man i love terry funk too like he was just so different than everybody else like he sold different he moved different 
Well, he's a he's a he's a forever icon, man. Forever and ever. Yeah. Forever. Oh, look at Hanson put on the brakes there. He's Is like, he? uh-uh. They're gonna yeah. pick me up. Pick me up when I'm ready for you to pick me up. <laughs> Two seconds, Eric. I'm gonna grab a Jumbo beverage real quick. Suggested match too. Mm -hmm. You're good, man. Look, he's gonna pick him up and throw him down. That was with authority. Oh, that back chop, the Funk's face tells it all. Oh. Just absolutely smashing his head in the tremble. さあ、テリーファンクの表情がちょっと歪んでまいりました。さあ、ジョンセンはまさに反戦のペース。一辺倒になってまいりました。竹内さん、ペーサー争いとしては反戦ですね。今のところ完全に反戦のペースですね。そ
Work around that knee. Keep the big man down. Look, you gonna kick him off? Eric, man, I think you sent me some cold weather. I'm gonna need for you to take it back. <laughs> What's cold down there for you, though? I mean, right now it is. Oh, God, I don't even want to tell you this because you're gonna laugh at me. Uh, it's 63 degrees out there right now with uh, heavy winds and rains. Bro, if, it, if, if it was 63 here, I would have one shorts. <laughs> 63 would not be cold here. But we don't have pythons here, so I guess there's that. Yeah, this is definitely oh, the match I think Funk is and I, busted open. Yeah, this is what we saw before. Is this the match where Funk just takes a beating through most of it, if I'm not mistaken? I could be wrong. Uh, he's been getting some offense here. Okay. Uh, then this I, is, I'm pretty sure I've seen this one. They've got a... I was just going to say, this is one that you and I haven't seen together then, because so I think the one we saw together, Yeah. Hanson just... I mean, you never saw Funk take a beating like that before. Yeah. Goth said that we should try and get old Earl Hebner on for uh, for a future show, and I said, I don't know, man. He may try and call it early. <laughs> now, Patrick, was that he made the count too slow, too fast, or he just counted regular, right? Counted yeah, regular. I'm sorry. He counted regular. Everybody's like, it was supposed to be a fast count. And he was like, they told me. He's like, I got told three different things by three different people. <laughs> I will tell you something. If, if Patrick agrees to come on the show, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to talk about that. I want to talk about it, the Deep South stuff and what he's got going on now. And, yeah. You know, yeah. It's going to be a good one. We well, I talk about the same there. thing that's been talked about 500 times, you know? Um, I've got a I've got something I want to run by you. Oh, look at Terry. Just oh. Just dropping that lariat and going back to the toehold. Yep. Yeah. Just been in toehold. Oh, there was oh. a referee. I think that referee's Tiger, Tiger Hattori. Oh. 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 Very <laughs> suspect. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, wait a minute. Take the turnbuckle off. Oh, no, that's his rope. Is it? Yeah, that's his rope. I thought he was taking the turnbuckle off. Look, I even got the bull rope with the cowbell and the vest. So that's how big of a Stan Hansen mark I am. If, if I don't see a match with you coming out with the bull rope and the vest, I'm going to be very disappointed. Oh, man, every, that's every match now. I come Good. out ringing. So the first match I came out with the bull rope, right? Uh, the show that had it at the stage would go directly to the ring, like the old school WCW, straight walk to the ring, right? Yeah. And like the crowds into it, like they get into that bull rope and uh, they get into the cowbell. And I took it and I'm like the heel was standing near the ropes and I swung it at him. And the oh yeah, and the cowbell hits the top rope and s swings right back up and just smacks me right in the forehead. <laughs> and I did, my wife was like, That cowbell's so stupid. And she was telling me the whole time, she's like, That cowbell's so stupid. And it smacked me in the forehead. I just looked over at her and she just shook her head, like, mm hmm. <laughs> it's like I told you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so that's you... the first thing. Like that hurt. <laughs> the so. first thing I see when I see her first thing says is so that hurt. <laughs> so how did you get a concussion? <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, he's just. I mean, he is choking Terry out here. We were just going for the same thing. Yeah. And Hanson is just. <laughs> being vicious here. He's got the rope around his neck and now through his mouth, across his mouth. Oh, man, look at the self here right there. Yeah. Man, like Terry Funk is one of the best sellers of all time, man. Like, 
Yeah, I've not seen this. So this is. So this is kind of the. This is the match that sets up for the big feud with Hanson and the Funk Brothers. Because if I, I'm not going to spoil what happens. If, but I've seen this one before. Oh, he just threw the rope out. It's <laughs> one of the young boys. So, so yeah. He's like, here, take this. I don't want it anymore. I've already checked the man out. So vicious. Oh, yes, it was, man. Like The match we're going to watch with him and Terry Gordy, I just saw it the other day, like two days ago for the first time, and I was like, oh, man, we got it. I told you, I was like, we got to watch this match. <laughs> What's fucking crazy is uh, <clears throat> you send me that text, and I had already started kind of looking at some of the Hanson stuff in Japan, and that one was already on the list. I didn't finalize everything uh, oh, this morning. If it's the same match, it's, it's definitely it was on the list. Just because, again, like Bam Bam Gordy's another one of those guys that you put him in the same caliber as Funk and as Hanson to go overseas and, and become a bigger star. Overseas, the same yeah. thing he said for Steve Williams. Steve Williams, yeah, Doctor Death, absolutely. Here we go. Dory's oh, had Dor it. Who is this? I'm tired of you beating my brother. Story. Story. Yep. Oh, look at Dory getting in here and putting the boots to Hanson. Have you watched much Dory Funk? I've I've watched a lot of Dory in Japan. I've seen a lot of his stuff with. So like Dory's. Dory is like su such a good technical wrestler. Like his in-ring mechanics are so good, but he just didn't have that charisma and fire that Terry had. You know, mm. Dexing right there. Hanson's like, "Where's Hanson Brody? Packing. Let me go get Brody. Let me just hold on. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Let me get Brody." If I'm not mistaken. I think Hanson runs back out and attacks Dory. Yep, they're watching in the background. Let me ask you, do you think anybody sells like this in modern wrestling? Absolutely not. Yeah. It's part of the problem. I don't think so either. And uh, I think that's like a lost art in wrestling, man, is that people don't, don't sell like this, you know? That's a big part of the story. It helps you get sympathy. Like, so that's a big thing for me. Yeah, it's just that, you know, modern wrestling now is just not what it once was. At least on the major platforms. Yeah. Dig into, you know, some of the, the independents out there, then there are, you know, like Riot City Wrestling. They, just based on talking to a couple of the guys, Katie Trey and Red Shaw and... Uh, we've got something with Angus Stacy coming up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, just talking to those guys and talking about how they do their training, like they have classes where you know, part of it is they'll look at one of the guys and say, "Sell the foot," and then you need to you have yeah. to sell your foot. Like you know, just it, it's they're teaching the guys down there how to sell and how important it is to sell within the confines of the match. And, um, it's good to. See See that there are independent promotions out there that, that have not lost that. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's really awesome. I remember me and my a couple of my buddies like back in the day, uh, we would just like like at certain shows we'd be like, hey, uh, if they were working show, they'd be like, why don't you work this for the heat? So I'd be like, work his ear for the heat, and like like the ear, and I was like, yeah, and they'd be like, okay, but you got to work like his fingers for the heat and I'm like okay <laughs> so we just pick like random stuff and like that you don't normally see you know like the ears like I had a buddy one time like he's the good looking baby face and he's like uh what do you want to do for the heat I was like I'm gonna work your face and he's like what do you mean I was like everything I do is gonna be to your face and he's like oh, I love it <laughs> Terry still selling look, this shit. look at Terry man Terry looks like he's been mugged by like a gang or something. Like if you just saw, if this wasn't in pro wrestling, you took Terry Funk, how he looks right now, how he's walking, and you just put him down a city street walking like that, people are going to freak out. I mean, wouldn't you? Freak out, freak out, freak out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> just saying. Uh... 
Are you ready to go? To the yeah, next? I was. I was just. I, held, I was hanging tight to see if uh, if Hanson was going to come back out. But yeah, we can yeah. move into to Hanson and Gordy, nineteen eighty six. Uh, you should be at the one minute thirty one second mark is where I'm at. <clears throat> see if I can hear. You. And this one, I gotta open these individually now. Yep, this is the one I watched just the other day. Uh, this one is definitely going to start out uh, hot and heavy, guys. Uh, so obviously we skip the entrances and. Uh, Hanson has just gotten in the ring, and Gordy is going to fucking yeah. pounce. Uh, so I'm at 131. You gotta skip past that. Uh, gotta skip past that copywritten music of uh, uh, Terry you know. of Terry Gordy. <laughs> gotta, yeah. You I'm at 135 right now. All right, I'm at 131. I'm on. I'll tell you when I'm at 35. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. 32, right. 33, 34, 135. Hanson is down. Here we Let me go. You know when you're at 141. I'm at 142, 43, 44, 45. All right. We're good. We're pretty much on the same page now. He's caught Gordy. Yeah, he started hard and he hot and heavy. Just came right at him. Yeah. I mean, why would you, if you're getting in the ring with fucking Stan Hansen, are you going to let him? I ain't wasting get, enough uh, No, absolutely. <laughs> let, me, let me just start this, jumpstart this now <laughs> because. Look it, at I, that hair of Terry, of Terry Gordy. Just bouncing with those locks, man. I mean, it just reminds me of Pert Plus. <laughs> and, and Hanson is is in this 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 era is gone with the shorter hair, which I always liked that better than Hanson's yeah. his puffy dude like he had in the first couple of matches. I don't know, maybe it's just an appearance thing. Yeah, I like this. If I see somebody that's that's a you know like Hanson's a badass. Let's just be fair. You see Hanson with hair yeah. versus a shaved head. To me, he's more scarier with less hair because he's just, I don't know, it, it's just a physical appearance thing to me. that He could he, he already looks like he's going to kill me. Now he just looks like he doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. You know? Like, Harry Gordy does some stuff in this match. I was like, oh, man, I did not expect that. Hmm. Them boys are laying the leather on each other. Oh. I was supposed to have a match tonight with a with a guy that was probably going to look a lot like this match. Uh, but then last night, uh, I got a messy test of positive for COVID, so I don't know who I'm going to have a match with tonight. Not him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, not him, that's for sure. Not him. <clears throat> All we know is that somebody's eating the lariat tonight. Oh, look at that! Uh, Gordy with the Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I was like, I was not expecting that. A run up the corner turnaround cross body, man. That was impressive. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> I like I like that cell a lot. I'm like, oh Lord, get me out of here. <laughs> you just never know. Like, so there's something to like these matches. Like um, I think I watch matches now, and I'm like, man, that's too crisp. It's too well executed. Uh, I like. I think there needs to be a little sloppiness in it to make it look. It's so funny. Contest, you know what I mean? It's so funny that you say that. When we were talking with Skrilla, and you'll hear it in, we, in his conversation with us, like that's a piece of what he was talking about. He was like, you know, I, I, I am appreciative of, you know, the way that I work, but sometimes a little clunkiness is, it, it shows a little bit more realism, and that it's a, it's a, it's a fight yeah. versus a, a choreographed situation. And the logic behind that makes a lot of fucking sense. Uh, you know, everybody wants to have yeah. a perfect match, but, you know, we were watching some of his stuff, and I, you know, we said I told him on the interview, I was like, man, I'm, I'm, I don't mean this to knock towards anybody that you've been in the ring with, but I can tell when you're in the ring with somebody who's experienced versus somebody who's not. And I've watched your stuff enough to know yeah. that there are moments that we see in some of these matches that you can tell it's not your fault. But what I appreciate is how quick yeah. you recover and how quick you can 
yeah. transition it into something that makes sense uh, as far as um, in the storytelling aspect of it. So not you're 100% to hear you turn around and say similarly the same thing is like sometimes the, the having the the clunkiness and, and the, the the botches a little bit here and a little bit there it, it enhances the match it, it, but it's all contingent on how the recovery is at least from my perspective as a onlooker and a guy who was in the business yeah. well I don't even mean like necessarily like like botches like uh like like take this match for example like well I don't want it to look too court. Like if you watch, like boxing, like not not every shot's gonna land. Like sometimes they're gonna get off balance. Like UFC, like uh-huh. sometimes they're gonna trip and fall. Like uh, it just adds like more realism to it. But also like when you see, like uh, a choreographed match that looks like something from a stuntman show, like that doesn't look like a, a legitimate fight to me. Like don't get me wrong. Like I've told my buddy, like Jason, Jason the Gift Kincaid, it's one of the smoothest Christmas wrestlers ever. Like he'll have these highlights of him going through these chain transitions, these high flying transitions. And I told him, I was like, man, it's beautiful. Like it's a beautiful show, but I don't, I don't like it. It's not for me. Like uh, I get that there's people out there that love that, like dig that, but I like it to look like a fight. You know, like this looks like a fight. Like two dudes really trying to beat each other up. I like. Uh, I just, I'm just not a big fan of like the the s- smooth transitions and like the timed f- flips and f- dives and stuff. Like that's just not not it for me, you know. Oh, Hanson, Larry, it's the ring post. Yeah. Ooh. I, I 100% feel where you're coming from. Uh, obviously, I like I'm again professional wrestling. There's so many aspects of it, and people like different things about it. That's what makes it so cool. Um, yeah. I'm I'm more of a when I watch a match, I don't go in with any expectation. I go in, yeah. especially if I'm watching newer stuff. Like obviously stuff like this, yes, I have expectations on. This is it's fucking Stan Hansen and Terry Gordy, so I expect for this to be. <laughs> when I'm watching the indie the indie stuff, like I we I have no expectations because if I if I come in clear headed and and 100 percent just watch. And see if it, see if I get invested in it. And if I get invested in it, then I know it's a win. Uh, and I don't get invested yeah. in everything. We were t- again, we we're talking to Skrilla last night. Uh, John and I did a stream Monday night on a uh, with an indie out of out of the UK. Not everything that we see is good. And when my co-host falls asleep yeah. on the stream, like <laughs> that tells you everything that you need to know about the product. Because John used to be in the business too. It's disrespectful, right? Like, it's just a disrespectful thing. Yeah. However, I can't blame him for that because I told him after the show, like, I cut his camera off because he was knocked out for, like, 30 minutes. And, and I get it because I was right <laughs> oh, there. Oh, man, that's crazy. I was right there. I could have, yeah. I, I mean, it was just slow. It was a slow-paced show. But, again, going in yeah. open-minded with everything, like, I... I'm forced to say that I will not watch any more of that product. Like I, it, you know, just, it, yeah. it didn't captivate me. Um, and that's not with everything. That's just you know, it, it's here and there. It's it's it, with with the indies, man. It's just a, it's a mixed bag. It's either going to be good or it's going to be bad. You know, there's there's very little middle ground yeah. when it comes to and the like, You got to pace things. Like uh, the company I started, like I came back and started booking for. Uh, I'm like, man, you got you book good guys, but you just gotta you gotta structure this show better. Like, I hate when indie shows open with a promo, man. Like these people have been like, most 99.9 percent of indie shows start late, they don't start on time. These people have stood in line outside. Now they're sitting in these chairs. They probably aren't that comfortable. And instead of like, they came for a wrestling show, and you want to start them off with like a promo that has a 50-50 chance of being entertaining. You know, depending on who's giving it. Uh, I was like, don't do that. Like, So when I took over, if you're going to have a promo, I'm starting out with a match that's going to be fast-paced. Like, I want to have some action to, like, get you excited. Like, oh, okay, well, this is cool. Then I'll give you a promo. Then I'll give you guys that are going to, like, work the crowd. Like, more tour- storytelling. Like, uh, you know, like maybe the slower patterns that, you know, have a world of experience that can work the crowd really well. Like, I'm going to put them on next. Uh, you know, I'm going to give you a tag match, probably third, like, 
you just gotta it's about structure and pacing mm -hmm. too and i think that's a big thing that a lot of people miss out on oh and terry gordy is a bloody mess right now too Yes, he is. That that face is a crimson mask, and no, that is not paint. <laughs> that is not free bird red that, that that we would see over in the state. That is the 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 wages of a war with Stan Hansen. Also, oh look at that! That is a beautiful cell, man. I loved the canvas that All Japan had at this time with the split two tone colors. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that's where the video, like the fighting games, got this, or if they got that from like fighting games. So I feel like this, they were they had that before, like you know, Street Fighter and stuff was like a big thing, having the two tone slashes. Yeah, I'm not 100. percent I'd have to do some research on that one. <clears throat> I remember when Ring of Honor first started; they had a canvas like this. Hmm. He is just foot on the gas, man. Hansen is his foot on the gas. Oh, he yeah. sees he's going for Oh, wait. Who is this? I don't know. Who, I'm not sure who this guy is. Like, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of the guys from this time, but I'm not familiar. I don't know who this guy is. Right now. Oh! <laughs> and I like the, the chairs that they had then because if you would hit a guy over the head, the seat would go flying out of the chair and go flying across the arena, you know? Yeah, the thing about Stan Hansen is he was so big, but, bro, his gas tank was, like, deep. Like, he just kept going, going. Like, he's 20, 30 minutes into a match, and he's going just like the opener. 100%. And he's like non stop, too. Oh, they're just working over Hanson here. Oh, he ducks. Scoops up Gordy. Slam. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> now they done effed around and let they Hanson get a chair. chair. <laughs> they done <laughs> let Hanson get it. So I'm thinking Hanson's baby face in this match. Oh, we got chairs flying in the ring. Okay, that yeah. was from Gordy and... Uh... Well, dude, I don't know. Who, I don't know who that guy is, honestly. Well, this is 86, so I wouldn't have been asked earlier with the PD6. Like, the 90s, early 90s. I knew who pretty much all those guys were. Hey, look at Hanson. He's like, hey, where you going? I thought we were having fun. Where you where you going? Mm -hmm. We'll go ahead and put a pause on this one. Save a couple minutes. Because our, our next two are 30 minutes apiece, I'd imagine. Um, so again, Eric, like I said, I know that your time, if your time's limited and you got to get out at some point in time, you just let me know and we'll make that happen for you. Um, should be at a minute. I wish I might have to dip on the... My bad, I'm... I was gonna say I, I I might have to dip early in the Kabashi match, which man, after watch that Gordy match, I was exhausted. I fell asleep watching Hanson and Kabasha. Kabashi, and I was so disappointed. I woke up, like my wife woke me up, and I was like, "Oh man, I slept through this whole match." <laughs> well, I know you know Eric. We got we got a choice. You know, if you've got to bounce out after this after this match, we got Masawa and we got uh, Kabashi. So which one do you want to watch? Masawa, he is my all-time favorite Japanese wrestler. All I'll right. never turn down watching a Masawa match. Uh, your start time is 1 minute and 50 seconds. Let me know when you get there, and we'll count this bad boy in. 150? Yes, second. sir. Uh, I'm trying to get to 150. Oh, All right, I'm okay. at 150. All right. Shot of the belt, right? Yes, sir. I stopped it right there. Uh, three, two, yeah. one, play. The Triple Crown. That's right, man. Oh, this is like prime All Japan 2. It, oh, yeah. I am absolutely off for this match, man. 92 can't beat 92 All Japan Wrestling with anything in the world. Man. 
Look, when we pick people like matches between, if you could only watch two people wrestle each other, like if you could only watch Flair and Steamboat or Hart and Michaels, you had to pick your two, your legendary rivalry that you could only watch matches them. I am picking Hanson and Masala. That's uh, that's high praise right there. And I don't Man, even I know would, where I would could go, I, where I would go with that. At like legendary rivalries, I'm picking Hanson and Masala, man. Like just, uh, just wait. <laughs> like I love Masala, I love Hanson. So Masala's my all-time favorite Japanese wrestler. Like the dude, like so good, man. So like he was not like he was Tiger Mask too, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he was not a very good Tiger Mask, and just because like he, I mean, your Tiger Mask too. Tiger Mask one was so amazing. He's a lot different. He's not the, the high flyer that Tiger Mask 1 was. So once he dropped the Tiger Mask gimmick and became himself, bro, just amazing. It just took it to the next level. Yeah, he got to be himself, and it was better, you know? He, got to, he didn't have to live in the shadow of Tiger Mask. I uh, probably could have fast forwarded this one a little bit further, man, but I'm not going to lie. When I saw Hanson with all three straps, I had to stop it on the straps because yeah. it, and he starts Tell running to the ring. And I was just like, man, I, I got to see this. <laughs> you just got to see the entrance. Yeah. He's, I love everything about Hanson. I love his psychology. I, I yeah. love the way that he carries his matches. Uh, it's just, it is a yeah. crying shame that he did not get that. You know, I mean, he had a pretty big run in the WWF uh, with Bruno and, and everybody. It was just a shame that he didn't capture the NWA championship or the WWF championship. I mean, there were opportunities there for that to happen. Uh, but his run with the AWA, his stuff over here in New Japan, Getting in there with the living legends like Bruno and Gorilla Monsoon and Stan Putzky and uh, or Stan the Man Stasiak, Ivan yeah. Putzky, like it's just it's a who's who resume. Like this guy is so fucking good. Yeah. And here, Japan, they Masawa. do a super show with yeah. They do a Japanese super show. Uh, I can't remember if it's New Japan or All Japan at the time. Uh, with WWF, I think it's 91, and the main event's Hogan and, and Hanson. Bro, it's so good. I wish we could watch it on here. I can't, I like, I, and honestly, I don't, like, I would have loved to see him and Hogan, but I don't know if he would have translated to WWF at the time with the way he was here, you know? I know I don't I don't either I think he, you know for him in my opinion if he was going to pick up the WWE it would be the WWF strap you had the opportunity with Bruno and several others to make that happen um, and this this version of Hanson to me I think he was in WCW too at this point was that, or was that a little bit earlier than this because no uh, I'm not sure. This was 92. Was it 91 when he was working with Luger? And it was either 90 or 91. Uh, sure, maybe. It, or could be up in this time. It yeah. was it was in and around this time. This version of Hanson, I feel, wasn't properly utilized over there. I mean, you got a big win over Luger, but he could have been in there oh, with Flair. Oh, look at how he sold that floor, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hanson could have been there with and Flair I, as, a, I think, like, as a heel or a baby face. Sorry. I remember he comes back, maybe it's 93, because it's a Halloween Havoc. I remember this scene from Halloween Havoc. And um, Eric Bischoff is dressed up like a Confederate soldier. I just I remember that. I was like, oh, that probably didn't age too well. Uh, and Missy Hyatt, they do a backstage thing where Missy Hyatt is trying to interview the handsome stranger. And she goes into like the men's locker room, and it's Stan Hansen in the shower. He comes out with a towel, and he's just like screaming at Missy Hyatt. So he's just he's supposed to be coming out of the shower, but he's also got tobacco juice just I, running down his chin. <laughs> and he's just chasing Missy Hyatt out of the locker room, yelling at her. Oh, the handsome stranger. That was Bagwell, wasn't it? Yeah, that was Bagwell. 
The side headlock. That was like young back well. <clears throat> there. But Hanson made so much money in Japan. They said like he just get mad at the promoters in the U.S. I'm like, all right, I'm going back to Japan. I'm again, like it's a business. Why would I come over here and work for yeah. you when I can go over here and make probably three times the money and work on top and work less dates and work yeah. on top in less dates? Exactly. Yeah. Like, I, that's a no-brainer. I would have fucking done the same thing. And I think anybody that, that had that opportunity in the time, at the time, did do the same thing. Again, not to go back on it. You touch on the funks. You touch on uh, Dr. Death. You touch on Terry Gordy. You touch on all these other guys that went over to Japan and made it to me. And, you know, I'm not trying to sound like a fickle fan or a get-off-my-lawn guy, but when you can... Go over here and make a bigger impact, uh, and and make a, a better living for yourself. Then you do that. You 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 absolutely do that. Yeah, and here, exactly. Triple Crown champion. I mean, he racked up straps in, in over in Japan as the prominent top guy. Man, if I'm coming over to the states yeah, and you exactly. don't respect my work, but I can go over to a country that I am not a citizen of. And you and they give me more respect as a talent and as a as a, invest more in me, man. Fuck all y'all. I'm gonna go over here and go where I'm appreciated <laughs> and where where my talents are appreciated. You know, part of it too is a style. Exactly. This style really jives yeah. well with with what Hanson's selling, and it it it's a better fit. Exactly. Film. And like we were saying. Uh, you know, last, I was saying last week, like, they talk about the four pillars uh, of Japan at the time, which was Misawa, Kabashi, Kawada, and Taue. And, like, while they're all having their big feuds and epic matches, Hanson's the champ. Uh, and they're all fighting to try to get to Hanson. And, like, they'll, you know, they'll get matches with Hanson, and, bro, they're just as good as any of the matches they had together, if not better. Uh, Misawa, he's had... So many good matches. I've got a five disc DVD. <laughs> so, uh, the handsome matches are my favorite, man. Ooh. And like, uh, so Masawa eventually left all Japan and started pro wrestling Noah. Mm -hmm. He took uh, Bashi with. I don't, I I don't think Tawei went with him. I can't remember. I know Kawada did. I can't remember if Tawei went with him or not. Um, and eventually, you know, after uh, a giant Baba passed, Hanson eventually left and went to Noah. And after Vader was done in WWF, Hanson got Vader to come be his tag team partner. And they were having killer tag matches at Noah, like Vader and Hanson tagging together. Oh, Hanson found a way out. Oh, shit. Yeah. That was back chopping. From his knees. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's quite a bit bigger than Masawa. And see, I like how you can see, like, Hanson using his leverage, using his body weight, like, pushing people around. Nice headbutt. Just, ooh. Ooh. I like how handsome with throw kicks, and they don't look like fancy trained martial arts kicks. It's just a big guy throwing his leg at you. <laughs> you know, like you'd see somebody, like a, like you see some redneck fighting. He just that's how a redneck. That's kick part of the fight, style you know? that I, I dig. I just you know, it's that no nonsense exactly. smash mouth. I'm here to, I'm here to fight. I, I, you can wrestle. I'm here yeah. to fight, and, and that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Like you're seeing here with like this this style, this is like the King's Road style like I was talking about. Like you're gonna see like a little a back and forth in the opener. Then you're gonna see a long heat and then you're gonna see a a long comeback where like the baby face is gonna start firing up, uh he'll get the fighting spirit where uh you know, he'll start making a comeback. He'll take some big moves. Like, he'll get his comeback. He'll hit some big moves. He'll cut him back off. 
and the heel will hit some big moves on him. But the babyface kicks out of and keeps coming back through with that fighting spirit, and then they'll go into the finish, whatever it's going to be, whoever's going over. And we're going to get there. Well, we have a little bit of a ways to go. Yeah. Hansen is... Uh, so you see that, that long grind in heat right now. Like one of Masawa's big moves was like a spinning elbow. And uh, it's not this match. There's another match that they have uh, where Hansen, like early in the match, goes for the lariat. And Masawa does that spinning elbow and elbows Hansen's arm. When he's going for the Larry, and Hanson rolls out of the ring and is selling his arm like he just got shot in the arm with a shotgun. Like, like his arm is broken. Like the whole match, he's just like cradling his arm, like working the match with one arm. It was awesome. Well, you talk about it. Here he goes. He's on that arm right now. Yeah. Like I said, you'd see a lot of the guys, like in Japan, they're working Hanson's arm. Well, it like, just you know, it makes sense. Like, take away it, his weapon. Exactly. I was just about to say, it makes sense. Like, if Hansen's throwing this big yeah. lariat, and uh, it really shows how feared the move is at that point over over in Japan. You know, yeah. like, it just shows how, how they're, they they put over the lariat. And uh, to me, it's just, it's great storytelling for Hansen because it just shows that this, this is where we should get a graphic of the. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to get a graphic of the word psychology just like panning across the screen. <laughs> psychology 101. Uh, yeah. It's just a piece of it, man. Like, yeah. Like, I had a, uh, a, a guy that I knew from wrestling. He was older than me. Like, uh, he's, he's in his 60s now. Uh, so when I broke in at like 18. You know, he was younger then, uh, but he like he loved old school wrestling. Like his favorite wrestler of all time is Ole Anderson, if that tells you anything. Okay. Uh, uh, but his second favorite wrestler of all time is La Parca. He loved old school territory wrestling, and then he loved Lucha Libre. Like at, he knew more about Lucha Libre than any person that I knew personally. Uh, and I would, you know, I'd be talking about Japan, and he'd be like, "I don't get Japanese wrestling." I'm like, Johnny, you're telling me that you understand Lucha Libre, but you don't get Japanese wrestling. Like, like it's, Japanese wrestling is more akin to American wrestling than Lucha Libre is. Oof. I, I mean, yeah. we, need, we, need, we need to talk all wrestling. That's the, that's, there's yeah, so... I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I like Lucha Libre. I used to watch... CMLL and AAA every day on Galavis or every Saturday on Galavision as a kid. Like uh, I'll still watch it. It's just the psychology and the story aspect of it is vastly different than American wrestling. And uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's a different, completely different culture. Of course, you're gonna have a different style of wrestling. Uh, but the Japanese wrestling, like especially this Japanese wrestling, is more akin to the American style of wrestling, where you're gonna see like a body part worked over. You got your you know, you got psychology and storytelling of a match more than like the Lucha Libre style, you know? Mm hmm. You're 100% correct. We had a hope spot in there, but Hansen's right back into the heat about it being a, yeah. a longer heat spot. Slam. Oh, look at that. Like that. Ooh, and then ooh, shoulder shoulder breaker. breaker on the railing. Yeah. When have you ever seen that I've seen before? That. I've never seen that before. That was nice. Saw looks like he's just questioning his life decisions right now. <laughs> like, why did I want to do this again? <laughs> Well, one thing about Hanson in the ring, brother, that man sure could throw a nice potato. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. So, there's, there's a YouTube video you got to watch. It's called Nobody Potatoes Me. Uh, I can't remember who the tag match is. Like Hanson, it's either Hanson and Brody or maybe like Hanson and Gordy. And I can't remember who the guy is. Like one of the Japanese guys, Potatoes Hanson. 
And Hanson, like, he potatoes Hanson. Then he just, like, something happens. He gets out of the ring. Hanson runs and dives through the ropes, like through the top of the rope, like a suicide dive onto this guy and just starts wailing on this guy. The guy tries to run away through the crowd. Hanson's, like, chasing through the crowd, just beating the crap out of him. And you can hear Hanson yell, Nobody potatoes me! (laughs) I mean... And look at him right here, fucking vicious, pugnacious. He oh, hits man. that shoulder breaker on the on the fucking guardrail, and now he's right back out on the shoulder. I guess what Hanson's doing now is like, if you're gonna try and come after my arm, let me show you how you really do. It. Here's how you're supposed to do. It. Well, Masala, Masala did the spinning elbow, so you know it makes sense to take his arms out too. Yeah. But you notice, like, well, I guess Hanson threw the lariat with his left arm. Uh, He's working Masala's left arm because that's what you do in America. Mm. But Masala would throw the right elbow. like <laughs> so. Now that's a piece of storytelling that I never quite understood. So like, or I didn't, I didn't adhere to, and I was in the ring because I just felt like the psychology of it doesn't make sense. And I understand you don't go after someone's prominent arm, but if you know what you're doing, it, it shouldn't be that big yeah. of an issue. If you're right-handed, I'm not going to work your left arm. That that's to me is stupid. It's like, yeah. you know, I'm gonna work your dominant hand or your dominant foot, but I'm also not gonna be dumb with my offense to put you in a position to get hurt. Uh, yeah, I think like the thing is most most fans aren't gonna notice if you're working the left or the right, unless uh, and that's you know, true. It's like, hey, he always throws his lariat with yeah. Like, that's true. Maybe that's but, uh, just a me thing because I'm in the you know I mean I'm in ring. Uh, but yeah, no, I get it. Go ahead. I, but I'm like, I always throw the layer with my right arm. Like I can throw it with my left hand, but uh, it's just a little bit more wild and not as controlled, not as smooth. Uh, so I'll tell people, be like, I'm like, well, they'll be going to work your arm. I'm like, okay. And they're like, oh, wouldn't you throw your layer with your right arm? I'm like, well, just work my right arm. Like, oh, that's so weird. I'm like, just it'll be okay. Like, just work my right arm. Well, then it'll you be can okay. sell like, your arm the... after you hit the lariat. Like, I mean, there's, you know, exactly. You can exactly. I'm like, look, trust me. Nobody in the crowd is gonna is gonna be like, oh, he's working his right arm. What a goof. <laughs> I'm like, it'll be okay. <laughs> Depending on what happens, that's an easy way to work into a finish too. So, you, so you're not going over, and you, but you still have the opportunity to showcase that lariat, and that's why you know what I mean. Like sell the arm, make you can't get to the cover yeah, in time, exactly. or something. You know, it's just so many different things that you could do with it. But I get it. I understand both sides of the coin. Uh, you know, I, I just, yeah. To me, it never really in ring. It never really translated well to me. I, maybe it was just because I couldn't. I couldn't grasp that because I. I feel like if I can see through it, everybody can see through it, and that's not necessarily the case. Yeah. Well, I mean, the whole reason is just like um, uniformity. You know, like if everybody knows like the work, oh, he is going to smash his jaw with those forms. If everybody's used to working the left, you can go oh. anywhere and just work the left. That was a nice reversal, too, by the way. Yeah, Hanson's going to... I like them. When Massaw starts throwing them forms, man, like... Oh! Drop Whoa, kick by look that big man. Drop kick. Oh, my God. Man. Little... Little nuggets here and there, man. That's why you see him throw one out, man. Oh. Three-point stance, shoulder tackle. How many people go from a drop kick to a three-point stance shoulder tackle, you know? Got it with a DDT. Plants him. Flips over into a little cover. New. Sal was out in two. Look, my chat just wasn't working on it, so I had to close out and reopen it. Uh, we don't have much chatting going on on the show. We've got, we've got some, some watchers that are watching the program. Some lurkers. No, nah, we welcome <laughs> everybody. Chat, no yeah. chat. Just enjoy the fucking show and enjoy wrestling. That's, all, that's what we're here for. Exactly. It's our Saturday morning cartoons. It is, man. This is uh, that's one thing that I like about our flavor on this particular show that we do is because it is early Saturday morning. It takes me back to when I was a kid and I was watching, you know, the NWA at that point on on Saturday morning television. 
Uh, or well, the rest. We don't have a big bowl of cereal. Just I, lucky charms, man. Let's go. Uh, they're magically uh, delicious. Uh, no, uh, no, sir. No, what are you? I, are you I can't a, do them. I can't. A, can't do them. Well, what's your cereal of choice? All right, look. So, I would eat cereal after working out, like every night. I'm on a carnivore diet right now, so I'm really missing my cereal. Uh, in no particular order, it depends on the day. Top three favorite cereals: Captain Crunch, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Cocoa Pebbles. Okay, so oh, I was going for the octopus. Your number one is not the business. I can deal with two and three. <laughs> you don't like Captain Crunch? I do not. I think it's the blandest fucking cereal that's out there. I'm not a fan. Never you don't like to have the top of your. You don't like to have the roof, roof of your mouth destroyed. What are you? <laughs> no, it's not for me. Uh, I'm, I'm yeah, definitely I a Captain cinnamon Crunch. toast oh, crunch, dude. Mark. I can do that. Uh, <laughs> but ultimately, like I'm saying, it's, it's, it takes us back in our program, like the rivalries, the territories. We're looking at that old stuff and we're watching the old stuff back. So it, it yeah. takes me back, you know, 30 years. I'm not kidding. It's just, it's just fine. Oh look, he's going for it again. Okay, I was thinking he was going to do a different move. That, he's not. I was getting Masawa would do the stretch plum. That's what, or not Masawa. Kaw- Kawada would do the stretch plum. That's what I was thinking. Masawa was going for. It's more like a cross face. Oh, Hanson's in trouble. I don't think I've seen this one before. Just a two count. He barely pops that shoulder. Listen to this yeah. crowd, man. They are. Oh, look at that back in time. They're here for it. This and is that big long comeback I was talking about. Yep. Man. That back in time going to do a frog splash. Oh, he missed. He found Sal him. had a good frog splash, man. No, it wasn't Eddie or RVD, but it was a good frog splash. These guys have went to war. And, like, the Japanese commentators, like, I can't understand what they're saying most of the time unless they use a word that's in English. But, man, just the passion in their voice, like, would get me hyped, you know? Yeah, no, I, you, I'm glad you pointed that out because when we were when they were going through it just a minute ago, and you had one of the guys, he's, like, screaming, and, yeah, like, it it brings you yeah. into it. I don't have to know what you're saying to know that you're excited and passionate about what the fuck you're watching right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's going to bring in well, like, me. when you hear the... Yeah, and there's something like when the women in the crowd would scream for Terry, they'd scream Terry, like, like okay, I get it. You're legit concerned about Terry right now. Oh, blocks that pile driver by kicking his feet. He kicked him, kicked him in the head. That was nice. But Hanson just got him back, though. <laughs> Firebomb again. Oh. Look, Anson just standing dominant, man. You better watch out, Tiger. He'll have a powerbomb, me too. Scooped up, slammed down. Uh oh, he's pulling down the knee pad now. Oh. <clears throat> Something so simple as that, as pulling down the knee pad, got that big O when yeah. he drops the knee. I mean, it's simplicity at its finest, psychology at its best. The crowd's invested. Oh, shit. Oh, he ducked under. Oh, going for the crucifix. Look at how he's selling that, too. Oh, Samoan dropped him. Cut off again. And again, here you go. You talk about the announcers. Listen to him right now. He is so jacked and excited. Liam, what's that wrist? Stomp on the shoulder. Shoulder breaker again. Oh, this shoulder time breaker. in ring. Oh, 
You know, look at it. We got Stan, Rowdy Stan uh, Rousey out here. Rowdy Stan Hansen with a Japanese armbar, Fujimara yeah. armbar like that, or a code breaker. Code yeah, red, I can hear the so Rufer? many nine thousand names for that move. I forgot about I forgot about uh, <laughs> Craig Craig Pitbull Pittman is like this. How are you going to forget about Red Sergeant Craig Pitbull Pittman, man? Like that, that guy was fucking dope <laughs> when he was around. I was into that character as a kid. I, and I enjoyed I was, him as a kid. I was not. I thought he was great. As I kid. liked how he would throw him and he would like do the jumping headbutt, like how he would jump and headbutt him, but that was about it. I was not, not really into him. He had an intensity about his face, though. He had good facials. Mm-hmm. He was a w, he was a worldwide mainstay man. Yeah. Anytime I was watching worldwide and they'd have Brad Armstrong in there, I was like, "Yep, this oh, will be a good one." That's it. We got a new Triple Crown champion. He put him down with that forearm. Yeah. Yep. That big forearm man, the big elbow shot. What a battle! Listen to the announcer, man. The announcer's losing. I'm telling you, and it was like this every time these two wrestled, man. Listen to the crowd. Hanson can't believe it. Well, what are we going to see here? Give me a handshake. Give me a handshake. There you go. big trophy they get whenever they become champion oh so when the Tifa trophy's Wada on there, when, Sikabashi. so when the trophy's on hand you know we're crowning a new title I got you got a new champion being crowned <laughs> heard I think they would bring it to, I think they would bring it to every title match so like you didn't get the trophy until you won the title and they would present you with the trophy to get your picture taken with the trophy and you get your name like a little plaque with your name on it and then you kept the belts you know, you carry the belts around with you. But the trophy was like for the big matches. You know, when you wanted, they'd present you with the trophy. What a match. Yeah. We'll go ahead and put a pause on that one. Eric, I know that you said you probably had to step out after this. Is that a thing or are you, you hanging around? Let's we'll go ahead and get as long as I can. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll move into the main event of the show. Uh, it is Stan Hansen. It is Kent Kibashi. That last match was from 1992. This is from 1993. The evolution of Stan Hansen in Japan. Uh, you should be at a minute 42 seconds on this one, Eric. One forty. All right, I'm good. All right, three, two, one, play. And as this one's getting, so he's kicking a young boy, or he's kicking somebody. I don't know if that's a young boy or not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a young boy. <laughs> as this one's getting started, I'm going to step away for just a second. I need to check on the dog. All right. Bashi going right at, just smacking the crap out of Hanson. Oh, DDT on the floor. I'm not seeing this one, I don't think. This is not the one I started watching the other day. Baba's on commentary for this one. I can tell that, tell Baba's voice. Oh, he is bringing it to the Lariat. After the arm, once again. Oh, oh, oh. Those are wild haymaker slaps. Oh, 
アミテープがハンセンの体に巻きつきます放送席前そして飛ぶか飛ぶか飛ぶかトップロープに手をかけているいやエプロンサイドから降りてきた小橋健太そしてリングにハンセンを戻しますおっとしかしエプロンサイド素直には戻らないスタンハンセン43歳ではありますそして、不十分な体勢ではありますが、フェイスロックに入りました、小橋健太。場内からは、ことずコール。この両者の対戦は、初めての対戦が、平成2年2月27日、勝負タイムは4分と8秒でした。それから7回、計8回対戦しております。ハンセンのアリアットの前に沈んでいる小橋健太、これが9回目のチャレンジとなります。さて、馬場さん、本当に小橋はゴディも破りました。My apologies, Eric. I,、uh, I heard the Zooster in the other room, and there was nothing on the floor that should have been making that kind of noise, and discovered that my TV remote is no longer a thing for the television in the living room. Uh, oh man, I've had that happen before. Not recently, but in the past, I've had that happen before. I saw a Kenta throw you know, his own lariat for a, a second. Look, yeah. Just a little FYI.、Uh, there's apps you can download on your phone that's like universal remote controls. Well, that's scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you gotta like program it to your television. Like,、uh, we lost our Fire Stick remote, and I just downloaded a Fire Stick remote app, and that's what we use for like my Fire Stick. Bro, you're talking to the guy who cannot deal with modern tech to save his life. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, mister, you're running this soul stream. <laughs> I mean, you know. Thankfully, you still pay for cable like a boomer. Oh,、uh, no, 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 no. We don't do that. We don't do that. We've got, we've got the stream. <laughs> oh, big kick by Kenta. We got the stream stuff. Yeah. But I think that's a large part that my better half's 10 years younger than me so that they get to deal with the,、uh, yeah. that side of the tech. I don't, I don't have time for it. I get frustrated、yeah. with it.、I'll、I don't just, really watch television that much.、So. You, you know me, bro. I'll just say, fuck it. I don't,、yeah. I don't need it. If I didn't have to have a cell phone, I wouldn't have a cell phone、yeah. right now. Like, I, I don't like people、oh, in、man. constant contact with me. Look, Kobayashi. I got Kobayashi. Kobayashi. <laughs> and not the hot dog, not the competitive eater. But,、uh, I know where、Kobayashi. your head's at. That's good. <laughs> You're all good. I'm bringing it. I'm bringing it, dude. <laughs> he has been bringing it to Stan Hansen, man.、Oh. He was smacking it. Oh, a big、mean. suplex. Dude, I love the reactions from the Japanese crowd. And, you know, yeah. Especially back in these days,、like、you would get that pop. And when you did, because they were real quiet, you know, this the respectful nature of the Japanese fans. But if you get that pop during the match, man, you know that you. And then they quiet right back down. Like the.、Yeah. You, you have center stage. We're not here to hijack shit. But when you get that pot, man. Yeah, we're not going to chant. We're not going to. Yeah. Ooh. Right. I remember I was watching a, a match between、uh, Loki and AJ Styles in Japan. And man, they are doing all these like back and forth exchanges, like high flying stuff, like the first five minutes of the match. I mean, probably not five minutes straight, but like the first few minutes of the match, non stop movement. And the crowd's just sitting there quiet. And AJ Styles is the heel, so he does something and finally bumps low key. And the crowd's just like super quiet. He just turns and looks at the crowd and goes, Shut up! And they just, the whole crowd just burst out laughing. Right. I'm saying. It's little pieces of it. Oh, look. Oh, I thought Hanson was going to try and take advantage, but he got caught. Ooh. 
Like, this has been, like, pretty much all Kendo Kabashi, you know? For the, for the first piece of it. Yeah. Bro, Kendo Kabashi was a big star for a long time in Japan. He was a great worker. Oh, he's a Owner future. Hansen can speak Japanese if you learn to speak any Japanese. Or not. I, he, I would think, and, and I mean, call me crazy, you know. Uh, I would think that if, if I'm spending that much time over there, I'm gonna I'm gonna learn some of the basics so they can try and have a basic conversation. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know how in depth it would be. And I'd say the same thing if I was, you know, down in, in Mexico or if I was, you know, wherever there's Germany. You got, I think I would learn enough to try yeah. and get by. Um, I would then, think just being immersed in the culture and the language so much, you would pick stuff up. You know? Right, and you also got to think too. I'm sure like his wife is Japanese too. So. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they had that they had translators with them too. So. Oh, and if I'm making as many yeah. tours as, as oh, these no. guys were, I would want the same translator. Maybe you can help me. You know, help me learn a little bit. Yeah. As we're we have downtime. Yeah. And like his wife is Japanese, so I'm sure she probably taught him some stuff, you know. Big stomp, man. He has been just absolutely putting it on hands. I'll keep it real. Whenever I'm out of the country or I was out of the country or if I was in an area, I, I you know, I'll take Spanish as an example. I don't know a whole lot of Spanish, but I knew I knew the basics. I knew how to say cerveza because, you know, I'm going to want a beer. And, and I knew how to describe yeah. my food, you know. So, yeah, you know, I, I, as long as I got the basics, I'm all right. Oh man, that kick! See, Biblio Azteca. <laughs> oh yeah, but bro, he has been putting it on Hanson. Like I've not seen Hanson take a beating. Like oh, oh, oh. What were you saying? <laughs> that was a knockout blow. I'll say I've never seen Anson take a beat like this before. Then he just knocked Kibashi's teeth off. That was nice, man. <laughs> look, look at Kibashi sounding like he is out. Oh! Oh! He just Superman dove off the damn apron. Bro, that was nice. I've not seen this one before. Somebody needs to clip I, I that. Said, I don't think this is the one I fell asleep the other day. We need to clip that. That's a, that's a TikToker. Pull some stuff out. Oh! Not on the pads. Ooh. Not on the pads. And no. you saw Great. how high he released Straight on that? <laughs> He's like, here you go, Kenta. This is all you. <laughs> Damn, that was stiff. <laughs> Look, Hanson's like, all right, you can beat me up for the first 10 minutes of this match, but just know I'm going to powerbomb you on the floor. Yeah, I'm going to kick your teeth out. I'm going to jump on you. Oh! I'm going to powerbomb you on the floor. Oh! Yeah, this is uh, this is payback time right now. That's all. That's what this is. Now it's my turn. <laughs> Man, you got the, Hanson was in Japan for over 20 years, like having these matches for... You know, 20 years. He was still going in the early 2000s. Oof. Oh. Those near falls are getting closer and closer. Oh, Kenta's gonna have a. Kibashi's got a, got some 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 bruising that's gonna be on his face. I think he's gonna walk away with this with a couple of black eyes. Yeah, I think they're both gonna walk away with a couple. Of, oh man, that is a big shiner on his eye already. Oh yeah, that right eye, it's it's already swelling. Yeah. I wonder if that's from the boot. I would think so. I haven't seen him catch him. And, like, look, Hanson's not covering the. 
covering the arm, but like, or he's not hooking the leg, but he's doing that's like a legit looking pin. Oh man, yeah. Oh, oh, and he's, oh. 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 I just smacked the case. That's power slap right there. Before power slap was a thing, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Hanson and says, man, I just don't. I don't get power slap. Hanson says, "Who needs chalk?" Yeah, I don't. I don't get that power slap, man. Like, if you've seen it once, like, uh, I don't know. I just don't get it. There's a market for everything, brother. Yeah, I mean, I get there's people out there that like it. Like, is I don't know. I just don't get it, man. Ooh. Oh. Oh shit. Me. What a kick. Crawling into this cover. Get John Bobble on commentary for this one. Oh, I've got all the big guns out. I'm pretty sure the crowd was expecting that kick out too. They did not get into that kick out as much as they normally do. Oh, oh. I would not want to take that bump. Like, I'm just going to jump from the top rope onto my back. I like that tight cradle by Hanson right there. Yeah. I say a rare hook of the leg from Hanson. He's not normally, if you watch his matches, he's not normally hooking the leg. He's like he's putting his knee on your arm and is shoving down your other arm with his forearms. He's not only hooking the leg. Oh, he hit! Oh, just a two count. I'm gonna need to stop playing with my emotions this morning. <laughs> what a match! Oh man, like I'm telling you. Like this is early '90s All Japan man, like it's hard to be. Nice. Oh, nice that's some sweet chin music. Nice little combo there. Yeah, stand him up, super kick, drop kick, running knee into the corner, running knee. Sad, sad. I'm gonna have a seat right here. I ate another one too. So brother, what? 25 minutes into this? Uh, hold on. Oh no, we're about like 15. Oh, okay. We're about. Oh, we're about those kabashi chops, man. Those are brutal. I'd say They've been beating each other up the whole time. Yeah, they have. There's been one one motion on this. And oh, I like that. So Kobashi would do this thing where he'd stand on the middle rope and kick you with his other leg, and Hanson caught his foot and shoved him off the ropes oh. under the mat. Oh. There's some head putts. Oh my god, there's another kick. Oh, Larry! Kenta! This cr the crowd is, is on another level right now. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, another DDT. Spiked him. These guys are just destroying each other. Oh, yeah, man. Sleeper. Oh, Dr. Lariat. Sleeper. It's oh. pulling him off. Getting out of it real quick. Oh, oh right back to it. Yeah. And he's actually got Hanson in a better position here because Hanson was in a seated, seated on the mat. Hanson may yeah. have hurt himself by trying to, to counter out of that like he did with the snapmare. He put himself in a bad spot. Managed to get to those ropes, so that that saved him. Oh, 
Terrible positioning by the referee, but you don't have a whole lot of options there. Yeah. Well, yeah, where else are you going to go? That eye, look, man. That eye's looking rough. Oh! Oh! oh that was nice. Vincent <laughs> said, nay, nay. You're not doing that with me today, boss. I got you. Thank you for making I this easier it, for me. I love it. And it's so impactful. It's a viable near fall. Yeah. With everything that we've seen in the Seems match. like a springboard. The war that they've made, it's viable. Like both these dudes, man, looking like they've been in war. Uh, just running short. It's all right, we're going to lariat him now. He just held the arm up. Oh. Oh, drop toe hold. Leg drop. Another leg drop, brother. Little, little spring oh, leg springing. Drop. Yeah. What are you going to do, Kento? Is he going to do... You got a little... Oh, yes, sir. Top rope leg drop. Rolling. Look, I used to do, like, the middle rope leg drop all the time. And uh, when I came back after my, my break, you know, uh, I missed a middle rope leg drop in a match. And when I hit, I instantly said to myself, I am never doing this again. <laughs> but the most you'd get out of me is a missile drop kick or a middle rope fist drop. I do a blockbuster every now and then. Uh, but nah, you're, I'm not going to jump and land on my tailbone. No, I'm good. Yeah. As soon, as soon as that happened, I was like, yep, I am never doing this again. You're like, I understand now why I took a break. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, no wonder I had back bones. Beautiful moonsault. Oh, beautiful moonsault. No! Two count only. Jesus. I thought that was it. I thought this was going to be the end of the match. I'm, I, if I'm Hanson and, and Kabashi right now, what do I have to do to keep the other one of you down? What do I have to do to beat the shit out of you and make you stop coming? They are just going full throttle since the opening bell. Got him with a knee to the midst of a big forearm right, by up. Hanson. Oh! Oh, jumping in some gurry. Right! Hanson's digging deep into the bag of tricks here. Yeah, I've seen more high flying out of Hanson in this match than ever before. I, 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 listen, I'm still on the the middle rope splash. <laughs> you got, yeah. yeah, what about the splash to the outside, yeah, man? The Superman splash to the floor too. Yeah. Oh man, he's just popping him in the face. Let go of me. Let go of my leg. Oh, trying to show him off. Like, this has got, like, the dramatics oh. to him, and this has been a stellar match. It has been. It really I'm giving this match, oh, I'm giving this match five stars, man. I cannot disagree with you. They've, they've just, they've been going 90 to nothing, and there's no, they haven't slowed yeah, down. And the emotion, like, the emotion, the selling, like, bro, this has been killer match. Like, I don't know if I've seen this one before, and I love both of these guys. Sunset flip? No, just two. Oh. The way that the these crowd has invested in every fall now. I was just about to say that. The way that these two have carried this match, it's any of these pinfall tips could yeah. end it, and I would not be mad. I think Kabashi's hit uh, handsome with every flash pin there is. It seems like an Oklahoma roll or a llama straw cradle. <laughs> oh, there's a big lariat. We've Ooh. not seen a Hanson lariat, though. Nah, We've one shot, one kill with that Hanson lariat. We've seen him attempt it, I think, twice. Kenta's blocked both attempts. I'm I'm waiting yeah. for it. We're deep now. Hanson did a Clark very good job of protecting over. that lariat. Yeah. 
can't remember what Kabashi. So Kabashi did the burning hammer, but I think I don't know if he did that in all Japan. I remember he did it. I know he did it in New Japan. That was like his big move. He's famous for his moonsault with chops in the corner. Oh, Hanson played uh, played played hooky. He A little bit of possum there. there. A little bit of opossum. Yeah. So don't let go of his hair. Oh, what are we gonna see here? Oh, I like that slamming that guy's head into your own knee. Chops by hands. Smack the taste out of his oh. mouth. Those elbows by the Oh shit! One stop shot. Oh. <laughs> oh brother. Listen to that crowd. Look the fans, man. Get that cover, Stan. Get that cover. Get that cover. That Kabashi's gonna kick out. It's over. Oh, bro. What a battle. That was fantastic. That was fantastic. What what a match, man. You called it. I, I was waiting and waiting and waiting. And you, it's a one-stop shop with that handsome Larry. And, and he yeah. caught him flush. Yeah. What a match, bro. What a match to end on, too. Like, that was awesome. I watch a lot of wrestling every week, as you're well aware, on these channels. This has probably been the, the match of the week for me. Oh, bro, so good. I'm telling you, it's hard to beat pants in Japan. Listen to that Listen crowd. That crowd, bro. Yeah, Jinx, you owe me a coat. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that was, that was good. Here it comes again. Oh, I thought we were going to get it again. Maybe it's when he gets back to the door. swinging that rope around people. What a, that was insane. That was nuts. That was great. We'll go ahead and put Paul. Hey, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go ahead and hop off here. I'm glad yeah, I went through this. Uh, it's getting kind of late. Final Getting thoughts. Breakfast going. Hey, thank Final. you all for joining me. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, I hope you guys love staying Hanson in Japan as much as I do. Uh, absolute favorite time of wrestling, favorite style of wrestling. One of my absolute favorite wrestlers. Thank you guys for joining me. We're not joining me. <laughs> I feel like it's about me now. I'm so excited. Hey, uh, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, you guys have a great day. Make sure you subscribe if you're watching. Subscribe and check out all these great shows. Eric, I will talk to you soon, brother. You have a good day. Uh, good luck tonight, and uh, we'll, we'll talk later on today. Thanks, man. Later. Yeah. Yes, sir. That is Eric Larry at Steel. Guys, this is we'll wrap it up for our uh, our spotlight show on our Legends of Wrestling on Stan Hansen. Uh, we took a little bit of peek of, of his stuff uh, in Japan today. It was a wonderful road. That match right there, you, I don't think we can top that. Uh, I, I see some stuff on the side that I was going to transition into. Man, I don't know if I can do it. I think that I think we leave it with that with Stan Hansen in Japan because that was phenomenal. Uh, this guy is is an incredible talent. Uh, had multiple careers uh, as far as being a professional wrestler and is truly a legend of wrestling. Uh, I am Chris Page. I appreciate you joining us live here on Twitch or if you're watching over on uh, YouTube via replay. What are you waiting for? Come on over here where the fun's at when we're doing all of our stuff live and, and having a good time. And you never know who will pop in chat and, and say hello. We had Michael Oku pop in uh, just the other day. Uh, we are doing some tremendous stuff. We will continue to do some tremendous stuff and bigger things are on the horizon for our channels. Uh, just hang tight. Things are things are happening. Uh, I'm Chris Page for Eric Delariot Steel. We'll see you next time.